Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So, if you saw my video last night, uh, you'll know that I'm up to some purifying flame uh, mysterious sort of building in the background. So, this is what the build's going to look like, essentially, right? So, we're going to run purifying flame, it does a bit of an AoE out, and then we're going to ignite everything. But what I didn't explain in the last video is where I'm going to take this build. And so now we're going to enter into path of building territory. So let's just put my mug up on this side and talk through this. So number one, obviously we are running purifying flame, but we're doing this a little differently. So this tree here, we get to initial hit 5.8 mil dot with shockwave at 12.245 million dot, right? Except this isn't normal ignite, this is black flame ignite, which is chaos ignite. And the reason why this is chaos ignite is it comes from our item setup from running the ring black flame. Which in a past build that I've done, which was detonate dead, was actually pretty effective. Probably one of the best builds I've ever put into the game and or ever really pushed on the channel. And super tanky as well. Now the huge advantage of running Black Flame is obviously enemies ignited by you take chaos damage instead of fire, fire damage from Ignite. And also Withered does not expire on enemies ignited by you. So anyway, uh, that's basically the concept of how this build's going to work. But let's talk through like a normal build guide. I'll explain each part of the build. We'll start from configuration, going through item skill gems, and then finally the tree. And we'll talk through all the interactions and the way I anticipate they're going to work. Now, just to preface this, this is pre-patch notes, so definitely things like automation are going to be a big thing, and I reckon we can use that with curse skills as well, unless they put a, a ban on that. Um, and the other thing is, like, um, obviously with patch notes coming out, they may retune some skills as well, so I don't know what's going to happen with that, so I'll preface that before I get into this. The other thing is, this is theorycraft, so I'm going to try and make this build based off my purifying flame build, but when I put out my League Starter Guide for Purifying Flame, I do have a version of this build that is not a Chaos version, which very much should have no issues scaling and doing huge amounts of damage. But this is just way more interesting to me, and I just think this is way better to aspire to. And it falls into a very similar build archetype that I like to play with CI, with Aegis Aurora and whatnot. Um, and so you're not going to get this in the first like two days of League unless you're really farming. But by about day three or four, you'll be able to start acquiring some of the gear. And, you know, some of this just isn't going to be available straight away. So probably within the first week, you'll be able to accumulate the gear to be able to get to this point. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's talk through the configuration page and go through this theory crafting. Um, there's not going to be any gameplay in this video. We're just going to be digging straight into the numbers. Okay, so from a theory crafting level. So configurations for this build for purifying flame of revelations. Uh, so act 10, we're going to kill all bandits. Uh, soul of Nara, soul of Aberith. Now time standing stationary is important because we're going to be running nature's patience. So that means that we're going to accumulate a lot more defense the longer that we stand still. And because we're like solo casting standing still and we're tanky running Aegis Aurora, this should give us a good amount of defense. Uh, now, Power Charges, Frenzy, and Endurance, you'll notice they have no effect. This is because we're running Relakesh on this build. Now, that's bearing in mind if they don't change Relakesh, they may very well change Relakesh because almost every build last league was running Relakesh. Uh, so then we go down to Focus. We don't have Focus ticked on, but it has an effect, and that's coming from, I think, our Helm in this build. Nothing else is ticked on. If you can get Onslaught, it's just going to make you a little faster in maps and give you a touch more damage. Blaster Active, Consecrated Ground, Purifying Flame gives you Consecrated Ground, and this build also runs a Bottled Faith in items here too, so there we go. Um, and then Nearby Enemies, 10, this just synergizes with Soul and Iris. Uh, have you killed recently? Most likely yes. Have you been hit recently? This is a tank character, so most likely yes. Is Convergence on? Now you'll notice there's a big damage spike, the reason why I'm not concerned by that is because most likely... You're proccing Convergence, and Convergence comes from hitting unique enemies, and there's usually plenty of those around. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, so it's a bossing stat, So and you're not going to be concerned when you're mapping, uh, because whether or not Convergence is on or not, you're just going to be blazing through enemies. Now, are you branding enemies? Yes, but it doesn't really do anything to the build. There's no other effects changed here. Withered stacks 15. Now the synergy between Black Flame and Wither is that you need a source of Wither. 
And the easiest way to do that, simply put, is to run spell totems with Wither. Now, normally you'd put this in a better setup, and there is a, uh, a like a main hand weapon that's still available here, which you're likely going to put that in there with like multiple totems and whatnot, and then you're going to apply like double totems of Wither, um, which is usually the e easiest way to do that when you're playing Wither build, and then that Wither's not going to deproc off the enemy because Wither based on Black Flame stays on the enemy as long as they've been hit by Black Flame. Uh, so that's why we have 15 stacks of Wither should take like no time if you hit like Q and then proc your spell totem and that's just going to constantly Wither. Now, I don't know if Automate it will actually work with totem skills. It'd be really cool if it did because then you could have self-casting auto totems and you'd just be constantly proccing Wither. But we'll see what that skill looks like in the next few days. Now, there is a bit of hinder in this build um, and you can level this up um, throughout as you play through. Uh, predominantly from Wither, and also you can get Hina as like an implicit craft as well on your, I think, gloves. I don't think I have that on this yet because I need to adjust some of the gear though. So if we have a look at gloves, yeah, we need to adjust some of the gear. Um, so it's very much like this can be improved further from this point. Now, enemies are shocked, yes, 30%. Uh, that's because we do run Shaper of Storms, and that's going to apply shock. Now, the second we take shock off this build, we're going to lose a fair bit of damage, so yeah, you do need Shaper of Storms on this build. Is the enemy standing on, or is the enemy on Consecrated Ground? Yes. Guardian Pinnacle Boss Damage? Yes. And that's basically all there is for configuration, but we're going to dig into this further. Uh, now, the other thing too, there's no fire exposure in this build, and enemies are going to be ignited. Though, for some weird reason, there's a stat here that if you have Master of Fire, it applies fire exposure to like a really moderate level. So I'm not entirely sure of whether or not that actually works or does, or whether or not that's an error in POB. But anyway, we'll talk about that shortly. So let's talk about the itemization of this uh, this build. Okay, so from a theory crafting level, Profane 1, we're going to be scaling Fire Dot, Fire Damage, because that's going to continually boost our DPS. Fire Skills, because we're running Purity of Fire, which is still a Fire Skill, not a Chaos Skill, just converting Fire to Chaos and then burning damage. Now this one like isn't the most wild one, but that fire damage roll is probably the most significant roll on that. But you can definitely get way better ones, which means there's a lot of room for improvement from a DPS level. If you can get another plus one spell skill gem uh, roll on that, even more damage, we can actually replicate what that would look like as well. So if we were to like put this on and we would go purifying flame, we get to 13.6 mil, but you can probably get better rolls on that one that don't include that. Aegis Aurora is a given. This is a non-corrupted Aegis Aurora, so you can definitely get a better Aegis Aurora than this. Um, in particular, one with like crit damage reduction would be ideal. Uh, in our helm, you don't need the implicit for wave of conviction anymore because that's just built into the gem. Uh, mana reservation efficiency. Now, physical damage to spells is probably going to work here because the way that purity of fire scales is based off of percentage of your physical damage converted to fire damage. So yes, that's going to apply. And then see, we do have focus in there, but you really don't need that stat ticked on. So you could put something a little more meaningful in there. Now that helm is really good. You don't need that helm. You could use a crown of the inward eye and you would just need to find a way to get more reservation efficiency into the build. So that's another option. And that would actually give you a ton more armor. I didn't even try that. So crown of the inward eye. Yeah. So you lose a bit of mana, mana cost or mana reservation. So you'd have to rebalance that based on your mana cost, but it definitely would make you significantly more tanky. Um, so yeah, maybe we keep it like that. Uh, and ES goes down, but more armor, more effective hit pull. So, I don't know, do the math. It, it's not a terrible outcome. Also, that's a pretty low roll. You can get 21% uh, full stacked roll on that. So if you did manage to get a max roll on that. Uh, so if we adjusted that up. So that would actually fix a lot of your woes, but your strength requirement's still a little low. So that's something worth looking at. But yeah, 394,000 effective hit pull. So yeah, you could sort of fudge that by doing that. Um, now, Incandescent Heart, uh, pretty much the best in the socket. It's got a ton of armor, good amount of ES, and we would get a plus two implicit to AoE gems, which tends to come up throughout the league. So not a bad way to go with that. Pretty much use that in most of my builds these days. 
If you don't have that plus two implicit initially, then you're going to be looking at 9.8 million dot, uh, dot. But to be honest with you, that's also not terrible uh, for a chaos dot build that rips through basically everything. Um, and then basically you've just got a really good set of gloves. Now you're going to get your um, ignite proliferation from your glove implicit and whatever other implicit you can roll on that. I'm going to do the build. So we're going to do some progress guides on that. Pretty much procking up the rest of your resistances and everything else using this as well. Uh, then we've got Relic Hashes and Patience. Pretty much best in socket boots. Now you could switch that out and run Legacy of Fury as well, which is going to drop your effective hit pool, but it's going to do like um, area explode sort of things with Scorch. So that's also another thing that you could muck around with. Um, and then we have our amulet, which is Replica Dragon Fang, plus three to purity of flame gems. And this could be where you get additional reservation up to 10% and reduced reduction of, uh, of requirements. So just another one to keep in mind. And then an anoint for charisma. Now, Black Flame Ring, obviously, this is where we're going to get our source of Black Flame. And then Replica Amber Wake as well is going to make sure that your Ignite steal an increase of 52% um, Ignite damage faster. And you would also want to quality this as well with Catalyst. Now, Belt, this doesn't have a Mage Blood. Just a really high ES Belt. Now, that's obviously why you get 6,196 ES. But you realistically, that 16% increased uh, maximum energy shield, you would drop that off. And you could just run a Shaped Strength Belt to be honest with you, and you'll get the same outcome, but this does require a Shaper base to be able to get that percentage roll of maximum energy shield, so this is actually going to be pretty cost costly. Um, so, like, Bated Breath or something like that initially is perfectly fine. Now, it does use Bottled Faith, Basalt Flask, it does use Topaz Flask as well, though these are, stats have changed, and this is not a best-in-the-socket roll. Um, and then Taste of Hate, it does have that as well. Now, I have a 70% increased effect, but you'd probably want that on Autocast, which is going to drop the effectiveness a little bit. And then a Granite Flask as well on top. Um, and that's going to give you more armor. It's going to make you more survivable. Then from a cluster standpoint, if we just look at large clusters, or we'll talk about clusters as we go through, basically. But that's it for the gear setup. So it's not like wild, wild, but it is going to be expensive getting into like the end game variant. For 12.2 million chaos dot, that's not too bad. If it were just like flat like ignite dot or something elemental, 12.2 is still pretty good. If we look at my like vortex ignite build from a few leagues ago when that was viable, that was like 8 to 10 million ignite dot. So this is still pretty strong considering how tanky it is too. Okay, skill setups. So pretty much in the weapon two, we're going to have Pur Herald of Purity because of the way that uh, physical damage is converted to fire. This is going to proc up your damage by a fair bit, nearly two mil. Um, I do have clarity in the build, um, but you don't really need this. And you could also proc this with Watcher's Eye to be able to get more energy shield based on clarity as well, having clarity applied. So that's also a thing. Uh, you need Tempest Shield because you're gonna be running Glancing Blows. Now I have Determination, Malevolence, Discipline, and an Enlightened Gem setup of various natures. So yeah, this is also gonna proc up your damage and defense significantly. So this is a must have. Purity of Flame of Revelations. So obviously we want level 21, 20 of that being the Revelations variant, which gives you 110% more damage. And then we're going to be getting Awakened Deadly Ailments, Burning Damage, which gives us plus one to Skill Gems, Unbound Ailments, Added Fire, which is another plus one to Skill Gems, and then just straight up Cruelty, because Cruelty is really powerful. I played around, I couldn't get anything better than a Cruelty. Even if you level up Gems, Cruelty still comes out better, so it's better than running a level three or four in power. Um, and then basically on our gloves, we're running a brand setup with Enfeeble and Despair with Arcanus brand and Flame Surge. Now, if you didn't want to run Enfeeble because this does proc up your damage, you could run up, uh, you could run Flammability and it does slightly increase your DPS, but I don't necessarily think it's worth it. Um, I think Enfeeble's actually a better stat at the end of the day. Okay, so beyond that, uh, we've just got to set up in here with Spell Totem with our... Now, you're going to want to put that into Weapon 1, so I'll adjust this tree as I play the build as well. This is just a proof of concept. Uh, Molten Shell and Casting Damage Taken. Now, obviously, we can't map anything to our Move button moving forwards because of the change with Automation. So, yeah, that's going to have to be the setup for that one, unfortunately. Okay, so the skill tree is going to operate on a respec scenario. So if the build that you saw in my last video, you would then, once you get an Aegis Aurora, start to respec into this build, and we'll do a leveling guide around this as well. 
And more or less, you're going to be re you're going to be running this up into practical application, arcane will, arcane focus. Uh, we do have a watch's eye, and this does have block based on determination as well, and malevolence as well, additional damage. So this is a pretty good source of damage for the build. But if you don't have this, you could just get any other like jewel with dot or burning damage over time or something like that, or even flat chaos damage will work with um with black flame. And then basically, we're going to prioritize coming up to searing heat. You're going to want to come up and have Chaos Inoculation, Whispers of Doom, because we run an Arcanus brand with two curses, and then down to Influence. Now, in this particular setup, we'll talk about the Cluster Jewels here. So we have Touch of Cruelty. This is, applies your Hinder. Um, Wicked Paul, which, which is long with skill effect duration, which affects how long your Ignite supply. And then we have Unspeakable Gifts. So this is going to allow for enemies that you have killed to do a 10% chance of Explode dealing a quarter of their life as chaos damage. And this is going to be really good for mapping because it's basically just going to be complete map explode. Um, now, currently I've got just circling oblivion and vile invigoration. This is going to give me a decent amount of energy shield regener regeneration if you've killed enemies recently. And then in here, I've got my first forbidden flame jewel, which gives me bastion of elements. And we'll talk about the ascendancy shortly. Then we come back across, we're going to grab Mystic Bulwark, Mana Reservation Efficiency into Firewalking and give us Cast Speed as well because it's going to be a bit chunky. Um, we're going to have a level of base crit, so we're going to want Elemental Overload for when our skill does crit. And then up to Acrimony and then up to Adam Natural Calm with Energy Shield Mastery. Then down into Insightfulness and you can play with this and reduce these nodes off if you are running out of points. This is a level 98 tree. And then we come up here, we've got our second set of cluster jewels. So we have widespread destruction, burning bright, which is going to give us bigger AOE, and master of fire. Now, as I said earlier, I'm not entirely sure of how master of fire and fire exposure affects the interaction with black flame. It's an unknown for me right now. So we're going to test it and see how it actually works. And then basically circling oblivion, vile invigoration, nature's patience. So when we stand still, we're going to get tankier. Um, and then basically Vile Invigoration, Circling Oblivion, down up into Self Control, which is going to give us Mana Reservation Efficiency for running Discipline. Then we come down, we're going to grab, grab Arcane Guarding. Now, if you can't for some reason get this Watcher's Eye, the easiest solution around that is simply to use the, um, the plus one chance to block per 5% chance to block on Equip Shield. And with Aegis Aurora, that'll throttle you, throttle you right up by 15%, which is going to fix your block issue that you may or may not have and so that's a good substitute for running this initially so you could just shave off these four points altogether and go down to a level 94 setup drop a tiny bit of damage and then basically get around having to find such an expensive watch as i initially so that's just a solution around that and then basically run holy fire fire mastery so we're going to do further damage with fire exposure from this i can't see any other better benefit um like we could run more life regeneration, uh, but that's not really going to work because we're chaos inoculation. So that's pretty much going to be the best sort of socket or best sort of um, selection there. Then we come down, we grab uh, sovereignty and then we come down, we grab faith and steel. We want this node because 10% of physical damage from uh, hits taken are uh, taken as chaos damage, which is a huge amount of effective hit pool increase. And then we want a Thread of Hope, and that's how we're going to grab our Glancing Blows and our Divine Shield, which is going to make our tune a hell of a lot tankier. Now, as far as Ascendancies, the first Ascendancy, you're going to get Shaper of Flames, you're going to move in the Shaper of Storms, then you're going to get uh, Mastermind of Discord, then you're going to despec Shaper of Storms, move into Heart of Destruction, and then on your fourth Ascendancy, you're going to come back and get Shaper of Storms. And then I have a Forbidden Flesh and Forbidden Flame Jewel, which gives me Bastion of Elements, which is going to give me like 84,000 effective hit pool. Uh, up until then, you'll still be pretty tanky. You just won't be as tanky. But running around with like 30,000 armor and everything else in between is still pretty damn good. So you're still going to be pretty like thick. You're going to be able to run around at about 600 depth delve without any issues and just completely ignite and black flame your way through de uh, delve. Like it should be able to realistically take down Crystal Kings at about 400 to 500, even on a pretty moderate setup with this configuration. So it should be pretty good. Um, and that's basically the concept of the build. Like I thought I'd do a video like this to explain the logic behind where I want to go with this build. Obviously like this isn't the league start tree. Like you're going to league start with what I'm going to put out as league starter guide. 
and then you're going to work to this tree so you're going to be systematically getting gear and i'll make sure in the league starter guide that i explain the sequence of items that you need to get in your itemization to make this build sort of pop the other thing too is like i do have a tree that is solely just for uh, purifying flame revelation without black flame so should you fail completely at making black flame work you can still make a 15.5 million ignite dot um purifying flame of revelations build which is still super powerful and if you're still concerned about that and or you mess it up altogether or you don't like the feel then you could just switch this to wave of conviction which is still going to do 8.3 million ignite dot at the end of the day so it's still going to be tanky I'm going to put all these options in the POV for you, but I mainly just wanted to cover off and do something a little different here. Now, obviously, I don't have gameplay in the past. I've done videos like this, and people would be like, where's the gameplay? The whole idea of me not playing the build before the league start is so that I can do a league start, have a solid league start, and then I can adjust that build as I need to based on the feel, and then I'll do progress guides as I go. Because this build has never been played before, I have no idea what's going to happen. And for me, that's actually a lot of fun. The unknown is always a lot of fun. As opposed to knowing exactly where the build's going to go and then being like, oh yeah, this is a mundane league start. This is going to be something exciting and interesting as it sort of unfolds and new and different because not a lot of Black Flame builds exist out there. Anyway, if you like this type of video, don't forget to like and sub. Uh, don't forget to follow the channel. Uh, there's the Twitch as well. And also the X account or Twitter account is in the description below. But uh, anyway, until next time and probably until the 21st, we'll see some updates then. There should be a ton of content coming from me, including the standard curation video that I've got planned. I've got a list of builds that currently look like they're going to be fine. But uh, we'll find out on the 21st, hopefully, if they release the patch notes. Anyway, until then, have a good one and I'll see you guys later.